What's hey, happening? How are you? I am doing well. Let me back up because my head is extremely big. You know what? I might even put my headset in. Look how beautiful he is. How are you doing? Say hi, David. It's Damon. So the last time I saw you, you were you were just you had just found out you were pregnant, or were you like three or four months pregnant? I had I just found out I was probably in the three month window, and you were one of the first people that I thought of because I was thinking about the power shift and all this, and I was like, this is definitely a power shift for me. Right. So, and he's trying well, to talk to you. But, well, that um, is a that is a beautiful, beautiful baby. Yeah, he's a he's a blessing. He definitely is my uh, power shift. So I'm gonna let him hang out with his grandma. But, All right. Uh, I want you to be able to meet him. Well, it is it is great to see you. And uh, so Veterans Day is tomorrow. And as I had already said in the opening, thank you for your service and your your family service for uh, you know three other prior generations to you. And uh, you know I wouldn't be in front of this great American flag if it wasn't for you and all the men and women and their families who serve this country. So thank you. Thank you. So happy I want to get for a birthday to all of our Marines out there. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Happy, happy uh, birthday to the Marines. So I want to get right into it and see how everybody here can learn from your experiences. And I had wrote down a couple of questions, but, you know, given, given, uh, given your, the generations of, uh, you know, the military uh, prior to you and your, and your family and what you learned in the Air Force, what did you take from there that you're applying today as, uh, um, you know, as a business owner and a CEO? Well, there's a there's few things that I think that veterans learn that's inherent to their service. The first one is about your core values. So it's integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. That's our core values. And when you're doing business with people, those core values, I think, uh, over everything else, I can hold on to those when I'm building relationships. Because you really want to have great relationships with everyone you do business with. So you want to always be honest and be selfless because this is bigger than you. If you're an entrepreneur, you definitely walk around with that feeling of this is bigger than me. Uh, it's that invisible thread that pulls you forward every day. And then being excellent at everything that you touch or, or volunteer for, or put your name on, you want to make sure that you do the best job. So. Yeah, but you know, and I appreciate that thought, and I and I get it. So when you're in the service, though, you have, you know, you're obviously you're instructed to accomplish certain tasks and or whatever the case may be, and you should go back to that because obviously, you know, everybody in there is on the same page, and you know, if one or two people are not on the same page, it can cost lives. It can cost a lot of different Absolutely. things, right? Well, when you go out to the regular world, the civilian world, and we've seen it even at the top of our office, our most sacred office, we've seen people that don't necessarily, and I'm not trying to be a, a politician, and forget even this top of office, just in, in companies you work with or mm -hmm. uh, other vendors or whatever the case is, we have seen people that don't have those core values. How do you how, what do you do? Because you can't just, you've got to work with people. Entrepreneurship is a team sport, right? Yeah. And you're working in the office right next to a bunch of people who just, or one or two people who are just wrong. What mm -hmm. do you do? How, how do you, how do you deal with that? Well, you know, there's a misnomer that just when you have the military badge on you or uh, a veteran, that that's supposed to equate to you always uphold the rules at all times. And we've seen there's good and bad. There's good and bad military, there's good and bad police, there's good and bad leadership in our country. But I've taken on the mantle of being the bridge. So if you have it within you to be a great example, be the bridge in that office, because somebody needs a reference point. So if there's a bad person in your leadership, if I'm holding myself to a higher standard, they can see the comparison, they can instantly see okay, that's not how we do business because obviously Shalinda doesn't do business like that or, you know, she doesn't conduct herself like that. You want to be a reference point of the right way to operate. Have you ever, I've, I've you know, in the Bob Evans, uh, Bob Evans Farms uh, Heroes and CEOs, um, you know, contest, you know, when I got the chance to mentor some of the uh, veterans, I've heard veterans say, some of them say, I don't even tell people I'm a veteran when I go to uh, work or to, to fill out, you know, to, to, to do things because for some reason or another, they will think that I have some mental issues or whatever the case is. Have you ever 
experienced that that you cannot you 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 don't think it's in your best interest to share with somebody that you have fought for this country well i i will tell people all the time damon it may surprise you i'm a 70 percent disabled veteran and they will look at me and just i've walked out of my car in a parking lot and someone will tell me you parked in the wrong spot and it says veteran parking so this misnomer that a veteran's supposed to look a certain way or that veterans mean a disabled veteran means that you can't function. A lot of us are high functioning. We're high functioning, but we've been taught to compartmentalize. And that's one thing that I see as a commonality of veterans. We compartmentalize. If you have experienced trauma, you have lack of sleep, all these things that normally people would complain about and say, I can't do X, Y, and Z because of this. We push past that and just do the job. So it, it's really hard because they, they will try to label you sometimes as because you're disabled that you cannot function. Uh, when it's yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, I, listen, I know somebody who is a disabled veteran. They're only, and they were in combat, but they were only disabled because they, they broke their trigger finger uh, in, 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 in fighting somebody. So they technically were not able to do this. Yeah. That's it. You know what I mean? And, 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 and everybody thought, thinks the person's crazy. Now, but let's get into now the better part about being a veteran, because I don't want this to be about the negative part. I think there's, I think there's uh, 900 things that are better about it. Let's talk about how do you uh, find ways to tap in to the veteran community, you know, get them behind you, if, if at all. Because, listen, you guys got You guys and girls, when I say guys, I mean everybody. You guys got a massive, massive community who are highly skilled people who uh, knows what you've been through and knows where you're trying to go from being selfless, you know, to serving our country to finally saying, let me do something for myself at the same time. How do you tap into that community and get all of that value out of that community? Well, it's definitely a tribe. I, I want to pay you a compliment because you have done so much for the veteran community. That's one thing that that is very well known in, in our community is the fact that whether it was the lace up with your boots or military <laughs> influencer, which is happening right now. Uh, there's no, the Bob Evans. You. So you've really gone out of your way to show your support. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of all of us. It is my, it is, it is truly my honor. And if I ever say in the past, that there's anything that I ever can say that I regret is not uh, when I was younger, I didn't serve the country because I felt that I needed to stay home and take care of mom. But uh, well, thank you. Thank you. There's, there's a lot of different groups right now that I would uh, support or I would tell people to go out there and learn a little bit more about them. Uh, one is Bunker Labs. So Bunker Labs uh, has partnered with many organizations to educate people on veteran entrepreneurship, provide res resources for them. There's uh, Military Fresh Network. And I think that you actually had a, a little bit of a dialogue with Jimmy Fresh one time on your IG Live, Military Fresh Network. They promote different military members all across all branches. Military influencer with Cortez Riggs. Uh, I know they went up there and interviewed you in New York. So military influencer conference really changed the game for me because these are veterans who decided to continue to serve through entrepreneurship. And we're leveraging our resources with, with each other to tell our story. So we want to be able to provide platforms, whether it's through media, podcasts, to help these veterans tell their story of not only service, but uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah, and if anybody watching right now knows of some great veteran organizations that you feel can help in any fashion form, please put their names in here uh, in, the, in the feed. Um, so I want to get now, I want to get to your business and I want to get to, uh, you know, just talking a little bit about that. And then we're going to get into some of the things that you're seeing today for all our local, you know, for all our entrepreneurs. So... You go on a Shark Tank. I'm not on Shark Tank, and they turn you down. And again, I still haven't seen that episode. I tend not to look at episodes I'm not on because I get this anxiety, or I get this one in a call, one of the sharks, and say, "Oh, yo, let me get in on that deal," or "Can I help you with it?" And then I end up realizing why I don't like working with all the sharks, and I end up saying to myself, "What the hell did I just do?" So I didn't look at the episode. And uh, you know, from what I, I uh, somebody told me is they turned you down because they felt that you couldn't work full time on it because you were still currently work in the Air Force, right, at the time? Yes, sir. I was what, still yes. active duty. Mm -hmm. Was it Kevin who started to talk all that crap? Or who, who was the one who's, who started that ball rolling? Mr. Wonderful. Let me tell you. So, yeah. so it was very interesting because 
when you pitch at Shark Tank, they tell you to keep a shark in mind of who you're going to pitch to. Oh, and they do? I never knew that. Let, well, that's what I was taught anyway. Well, no, we don't know what you guys are told because we don't know anything about you, as you already know. Oh. We don't know anything about you guys. And, and so, that, so they tell you to go out. Because I always get pissed off because sometimes when, um, you know, I'm giving an offer and whatever, and they keep talking to Laurie, I always, you know, and I didn't know that they tell you that. I all the time go, well, why don't you just come out here instead of saying hello, sharks, say hello, Laurie. I want to kiss your ass for a half an hour. You know, so like I, I never knew that. But go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just to kind of keep your focus on what is your message. Because if you, if I thought of all of the sharks, I'm thinking like I have to pitch in different ways because you all have different interests. You know, you have some that like more tech, tech companies, right. others that are like PVC. So I, I said to myself, look at my life. I want to connect more on like a life level, someone who would understand everything that I've been through just to get here on the stage. So I had a single mother who had sacrificed for me. I was selling sauce out of the back of my trunk to anybody who would buy it. And when I started reading your books and, and Rise and Grind, you were talking about, uh, in The Power of Broke, you were talking about selling sauce, the selling t-shirts out of the back of your truck, like I was selling sauce. And the attitude of nothing is going to stop me because this is bigger than me, and you understood your why. And I, even though it was premature at the time, I had not quite captured my why. And I think that that is what happened at Shark Tank. I didn't know my why. Mm. I was not ready to defend it either. I knew oh. all my numbers. I knew, you know, all the technical things you're supposed to know. But harnessing my why, which is legacy, my passion, I didn't articulate that. Okay. And so you weren't, you weren't able, I think that's, I think that's, I think that's like a little nugget right there. You weren't able to defend yourself you're saying or defend your passion right i kind of ca i caved <laughs> i really did because once they learned that i was active duty i felt really conflicted i said well if i'm going to play devil's advocate what would i ding myself on so that's how i prepared for shark tank i pretended to be a shark and just shot down every single thing that i possibly well who was who was the shark that you had in mind because do they tell you who's going to be on the panel Prior, they don't or... tell you. I, I didn't know until I walked out, you know, the, how the doors open. Yeah. I didn't know that you weren't going to be there till I was standing on the X. Is that who you came for? Or was it maybe Barbara? I know Barbara does really good with food products. Um, you know, I, I'm well, not sure. I was also thinking about Mark Cuban just okay. because his some of his values, you know, he really goes after like the underdog, he, if he can tell yeah. that you are do, going all in, he seems to really gravitate towards those companies. So I actually have Mark Cuban in mind uh, as well. Yeah. And he gave me some really good advice. He basically said, the way that you take this in will determine the outcome for you ultimately. So I, I internalize that as I'm going to keep going because maybe this will all turn around if I just don't give up. Yeah, but that's hard. I mean, you go on Shark Tank and a lot of people say, you know, there's 40,000 applicants on Shark Tank every single year. By the time the producers see about 2,000 people, um, then they narrow it down to an average of 200 people. The sharks see about 120 to 150 people and then only about 90 people hit the air. That's almost like mm -hmm. winning the lotto in some sense, right? Now, all of a sudden, you get struck down and publicly publicly also there could be you know a lot of people go on there for exposure and a lot of people go on there to get and get end up getting exposed a lot of people leave the tank and people go uh they look up your name on a smartphone or something else after you pitch them and they go wait a minute the shark shredded them i don't want to be part of that well you know shit i, I may not know as much <laughs> as the sharks or you know but a lot of people also say the sharks are idiots they gave up a, a golden opportunity but why would you decide after that to start moving forward when you just, in, in a lot of people's eyes, you would say, a lot of people internalize that as, I just nationally got turned down by uh, these, this panel that people deem to have knowledge. Why, would I, why am I going to go forward? When I walked out of the tank, I had a moment. And, I, and there's times in our lives that we're going to have moments like these, the, the rock bottom moments. But... I just believe in something bigger than myself. And as I tell everyone, 
If you believe in something bigger than yourself, rock bottom has a trampoline. So you just bounce back. You're not going to fall and smack your face on the ground. It's impossible because you were born with a purpose. You just have to go through this journey of life, discovering and what it is and appreciate the journey. So that was not the end for me. I just didn't believe that it could be. And uh, I just went back to active duty, really trying to understand whether or not active duty is my, my purpose, ultimately my purpose, because I come from a four generation military family, like you serve till you till they're dragging you out in your boots. So I had to think about what mutt sauce was what could it do what was its purpose what am i how do i continue to serve people with this company and it became more the longer i stayed in it the more apparent it became and if you are selfless about it and not thinking egotistically what can it do for me what can i get out of this as far as exposure you start to feel the, the personal rewards and that's why i felt i felt personal rewards from continuing to serve with mutt sauce it became really apparent around 2015. So I got out of the military, joined the reserves. So I do about four weeks a year now. But Mutt Sauce, Mutt Sauce has changed lives. And that is the reward that I get. That's the intangible reward is building memories and bonding with people. Well, you know, I love I love sayings and I, you know, I never heard it before and, I, and I'm not sure if you created it or not, but it, it is a great saying. And I see a lot of people in the feed saying, um, you know, rock bottom is your trampoline. And that is an amazing saying because everybody right now, a lot of people are looking for the bounce. You know, they are looking for that bounce right now because mm -hmm. obviously we know all the craziness is going on in the world. So I want to get into that bounce really quick. But, you know, but one thing I got to share with you, though, you know, to get somebody to try a different sauce, whether it's hot sauce, whether it's syrup and whatever the case is, and break the habit of what they already love, you know, whether it's tabasco or this sauce or that sauce i mean it's a hard habit to break it's almost you know because you know people people like to go what they used to you know they, they don't necessarily like like a lot of new things so you're 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 breaking a habit of telling somebody to not reach for that same thing they've always reached for to reach for something else and in the store it's always in the bottle it's very hard because i'll give you an example i'm always pitched you know, in the streets or various places. And I can't tell you how many times. And now, thank God, I'm not, you know, I'm never going to say thank God for COVID. Now times have changed. Yeah. And people used to, I'm going to tell you something, people used to pitch me in the, especially little older women, they used to pitch me sauces all the time at like um, conferences or something. Yeah. And because they may not have known that I was going to come by, they didn't have a spoon or anything. And they would be like this with the, with the, so I remember one lady, she had this white sauce. I forgot what it was. And she went, Oh, you got you got to try this. You got to try this. So, so you know it's hard. You know, I was like, I was, I was like, nah, 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 I can't do that. But I, I say all that to say, you can't force feed it to people, especially right. when they're walking through the store. And you know, you're at a point right now where you can't do tastings in every damn store you're at. Mm. How do you get people to break that habit to move from one sauce to another or anything? You know, because a lot of people here. They're selling whether it's lotions or sauces or whatever the case is and or soaps and they want people to break that habit. Mm. Well, the, the mistake that I made in the beginning is I was selling sauce and people don't, it's not the product. There's so, like you said, there's so many different sauces, but there's only one story of mutt sauce. There's only one mutt sauce family. And that is a very unique experience that you can only get when you come this way. So that is how I changed my whole mindset and rhetoric was we don't, we're not selling sauce. We're selling family togetherness. We're selling great memories. When you come to us, you're having a wonderful experience at Thanksgiving and Christmas, and we're selling uh, support for veterans and other charities. So it's, it is not about the product. It really is not about the product. You know who just who just um, uh, exemplified that? Uh, uh, somebody just said here uh, the experience and the transformation. I am not coaching you on telling you this stuff, and you are hitting it right out of the park <laughs> because you know I didn't I didn't sell people three sleeves on a shirt. I sold them an experience, and and I think a lot of people need to understand that people love a good story. People mm -hmm. love to hear that you were so passionate about it. It came. You know, you, you, you know, he gave that sauce to you. That sauce was generational, right? Who you are. They love a good. That's why Bombas works. 
you know, bombs and socks. Bit. Yeah, but again, there's still socks. But they people love, especially this Thanksgiving, they're going to sit around the table and go, what kind of socks are those? Oh, man, you still wearing those, man. You ain't helping nobody. Get the hell out of here. You know, <laughs> check these out. You know, you know, and, and that's what people are going to do. Or yeah. the story that Bombas does, um, they do the Sesame Street ones, right? So think about the Sesame Street ones. I, and I never thought about this. I and a lot of us have an emotional attachment to Sesame Street as being older. Mm -hmm. our, our kids love Sesame Street. Oh, yeah. But I was running around. I could never do, uh, you know, my wife and my daughter could do Mommy and Me. But I could never do Daddy and, Daddy and Daughter Day. But her, when, she, when she goes, Daddy... Put on your big birds. Put on your, you know, your, your, your cookie monster <laughs> socks. I can wear the same thing my daughter does. And she wakes me up, every, you know, whenever you can. Go, what socks are you wearing today? And she got her little big birds. And I got my big, big birds. And it's a story. It is yeah. bringing people together. And a lot of people who are watching now, they, they're seeing it with me with shirts, with bombers with socks, with, with you with sauce. So I really, I really like that. And I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people here can learn from telling the story. Yes, it's, it's powerful and it's unique. Everyone has something different. So I just tell them, don't, don't worry about the product itself. That's the, that's the icing on the cake. So if it tastes good, that's even better. Right. The easiest thing to sell is the truth, but tell them the story first and then product is king after that. Now, all right, so now let's talk about PowerShip. I highlighted you in my book for various different reasons because, again, number one, you did not give up after that. Then you had to pivot. What are you looking at and how are you dealing with what, – what's your power shift advice for people today? Because there are a lot of people right now who are that Charlinda who is about to leave the service or they're in the service but they're juggling this, you know, but now they got two or four hours back a day from not mm -hmm. having to go back and forth to work. Yeah. Maybe they're easy, it, it's easy for them to also reach investors on Zoom when they used to have to fly all around the country. Like, what is the, uh, it, you know, are they, are they going to balance things? Are they going to go all in? Just give me, give me, give me some insights on what you're seeing because you're working with everyday entrepreneurs, close circles entrepreneurs, you're a motivational speaker. Just, uh, just tell me some things that, that you can um, share with us. Well, I, I will start with what happened in March. So I remember marking my calendar before COVID because I knew your book was releasing that first week of March. And I said, I'm going to support him in any way that I can. I'm heavily pregnant, though. The baby came that first week of March, March 7th. I am in... Pisces, baby. Sorry, yes. guys. I was, I was in the hospital. I had not checked my phone. But my business model before COVID was actually 90% uh, events and retail in the stores and 10% e-commerce. Even though I had a Shopify account, I barely used it. I had all the credentials for Amazon, but I didn't have the Amazon store open. So in March, I look in my phone and all I see is cancellations. Every single event that I booked from May to September was canceled. 90% of my revenue just went out the window. Congratulations on your baby. So wow. you have no money. So right. I, I, I didn't know what to do at that point and that was my power shift moment i said i have a child my why is now staring me in the face i have got to do whatever i can to not only protect this baby i have to keep this company going by all means i don't know exactly how i'm going to do it but i'm just going to grind my way out of this i i determined that mutt sauce is a startup so whatever i had to do in the beginning of studying and learning I started uh, watching your power talks. That that was really great. Thank you. I I retook Damon on demand. I would that when TikTok came out, there's actually really great information that people share in 60 second, 30, 15 seconds to 60 second clips about content creation, about sales and packaging. And I on would TikTok. Say, on TikTok. And so would, you know, what, what are a couple of names? Of course, Gary V does a great job there. Who else, who else shares some good uh, tips that you, you may well, think of? I watched of? the foodies one. There's the packaging guy. Mm -hmm. The packaging guy is there. And then I would just look at hashtags. So I would search by the hashtags of content creator, Canva tips, Shopify tips. And if you search by that hashtag, excuse me, it will show you the videos and I would take a notebook. So I have this notebook and I just, 
I write down the lesson that they tried to teach you. And then I go back and I institute those things on my own for my business. So that's how I just accelerated my learning. It's you have to be a constant learner. Do not get complacent when it comes to education. There's so many online webinars you can take now, conferences that are now uh, online. So I became a, a learner. I cleaned up my business. So go back and look at your finances. Talk about your, have that chat with yourself about your weaknesses. Financial literacy, yep. I found, was still a weakness of mine. I, even if I had been on Shark Tank, I needed to go back and relook at my business to see where money was just like leaving out the door. And mm -hmm. how to put that money back in the account in a place that it will pay more dividends. So that is, that is a lot of the things that I instituted. My dad, because of COVID, he was working in a factory and the the owner said that he did not believe that COVID was real. Mm -hmm. I have a newborn in the house and he quit his job. He walked off that day. He said, one team, one fight is what you always say. So I quit my job and I'm just going to stay home. I said, well, I'm going to turn this Shopify store on. I'm going to get some packages. We're going to clear out the entire garage, set up tables. I called my manufacturer. I took the money that I had saved. I took about $10,000 and had sauce made, delivered to my garage. I said, congratulations, Dad. Welcome to Mutt Sauce, one team, one fight. <laughs> and so he did the deliveries. And now he, there's like this thing, like the community embraces him because they know when they're buying, they're also supporting the employment of my dad who committed to keeping the family safe. So you just, you know, those are things you can't. That's the story. Yeah, you can't go, what was me? There's there's a way that you can pivot this thing. And that's that's what, what we did. So All right. So um listen, thank you for everything that you have done and you're currently still serving. Um I love you know, I love I love our fearless women in, in you know in in the in the um you know in our armed forces. I love that um uh Christina, you know Christina, right? From my uh Christina who has um the dog snack company that I'm a partner in. I you know she called me the other day. She said she went back to the reserve. I remember we were doing a Shark Tank update one time. And I would tell you the story while I was doing a Shark Tank update with her. And the producer said, all right, are you nervous? And she was like, uh, I fly B-2 bombers. She's a pilot. She's like, um, no, I, no I'm, I'm okay. And, you know, she, so, uh, so again, you know, you'll, you'll, see the, you'll see these great women who are just looking so classy and great. And they will be the ones who are dropping bombs on you if they have to. You know, flying a billion dollar equipment or hundreds of million dollar equipment. But I think that a lot of people have learned a, a lot from you today. Uh, number one, you know, it, it is the, the rock bottom is the trampoline. It is also be able to tell you that story. That's what people are buying into. They're buying into the story, right? They, you, they can buy anything from anybody else, any place, right? But they're buying into your story. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, your father is another part of the story. Listen. You know, let's let's uh, let let me let me dedicate myself to my daughter and my family and my community and my my grandchild and make sure that I don't put them in danger. And that paid back, you know, in, in great ways. Also, keep hacking yourself, you know, keep saying to yourself, I can't be perfect in everything. I, I, I maybe I do need more financial intelligence. Maybe I do need to be, to be able to create content and then also say, uh, you know, I think the, the TikTok thing is interesting because in 60 seconds, you know, if their content that they're giving you to help you, whether create content or whether packaging is not strong enough, they're not going to have a good amount of followers. So that TikTok tip is really, really good. You can get in 60 seconds and think about if you just watch 10 of those videos, uh, you know, a day, you know, that's only 10 minutes, but who knows, mm -hmm. you know, it'll either, you know, tell you what you already know or give you something new to add to your um to your skill set. So I really appreciate you, Sheldon. Where can they, where can people find, um, of course, your, your hashtag? I mean, I, I put your name in there, but where can they find Mutt Sauce at right now? So if you go to muttsauce.com, uh, that's our website, and you go to at Mutt Sauce on any of the social networks. Two T's, two S's. Okay. Make sure you put it in, on, in, uh, in the comment. And I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, uh, take care of that little beautiful baby boy. And Thank take you care so of your much. business. I think and I said, hey. I will tell her she is, uh, you know, she's, uh, she's driving us all crazy, you know. Our, well, you know, your baby's too young right now, but, you know, as most parents right now, dealing with a baby anywhere from four to ten years old, you just got to oh. buy them a, t a present every day because the, oh the poor kids are home by themselves. They got nobody to talk to. You just got to oh, come home and be like, it. oh, 
it's going to spoil them. It's going to make them really, 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 really <laughs> nasty adults. You know what I mean? It's but a weird time to be a parent. You know, it's just, you know, you have to pull out every trick in the book just to keep them entertained. Listen, I feel bad for whoever her boyfriend or husband is going to be because, you know, these kids, <laughs> she's going to be like this every day. Yo, where my present? And then the, the dude, if he's growing up at this time, so he can be like, yo, where my present? You know? I would they, not want to be any, you know, <laughs> anywhere in the vicinity. It's like that uh, Will Smith and... Uh, uh, the movie, uh, I forget, was it Bad Boys, where the guy knocks on the door? I just imagine you, Damon, yeah, yeah. the door for the day. I'm like, that poor guy. Mm. Yeah, it's all good, though. But, uh, yeah, you're right. That's how it goes. But, uh, all right, so, listen, all the best to you, you know, and you know how to get a hold of me if you ever need me. Thank you again, and all right? Thank you. Have a great day. Right. Hey, you, are you subscribed? to make sure that you see all these videos with free advice, chats, and business experts, and content that will motivate and inspire you. If not, come on, hit the subscribe button and commit. Below is your chance to level up and learn every single week. I'll see you in there.